Hey guys, welcome back to Heart Breathings. Today I am going to discuss how I've been coping with my anxiety as a writer and how I'm hoping to kind of get back on track with my writing because I feel like my anxiety has sort of derailed me a little bit ever since I had my sweet daughter and I've been struggling with postpartum anxiety. But I know that so many of us as writers deal with anxiety, whether it's coming from hormones with postpartum or it's just coming from all of the things that we have to do. I think that as creators, Creatives, we do have a lot more anxiety and we are more susceptible to depression and anxiety than other types of people. So I just wanted to give you some tips on how I've been managing my anxiety and coping with it that I'm hoping will also help you. So the first one is exercise. I have been making sure to go on a family walk every single day. It is one of those kind of non-negotiables. Even if it's raining, I've been going on a walk. And of course, if it's raining, I don't take my daughter. But if it's nice weather, then we've been going as a family, all four of us. My son gets on his scooter or he just walks beside us. I usually will put Evie in my Ergo Baby Hello Kitty carrier and walk her with me, which she loves being in that carrier. And then George sometimes will carry her and the baby Bjorn and we'll go to the mailbox which is down the street a little bit um, we'll go to the mailbox and check our mail we'll walk around the neighborhood we actually were walking around the nature trails in our neighborhood and there are all these little like irrigation or like runoff ponds and there was a huge alligator I mean he wasn't huge huge but he was huge for me and I was like oh my gosh is that as we were approaching I was like what is that what is that and then I said to George is that an alligator and he's like no I think it's just an old tire or something no, it was an alligator. So obviously we turned around, George got a picture, but we turned around and walked away because that was a little bit scary. Um, welcome to life in South Carolina. But it's been so nice to have that little bit of exercise. I have honestly never been someone who enjoyed like really hard exercising, but taking that daily walk has been so helpful. I am hoping that when we do get to move out of this house and buy a house, hopefully later this year, that we'll be able to get another house close to the beach because I know that taking walks on the beach will help so much. But as it is right now, I'm about 30 minutes from the beach. So I haven't made it out there as much. But that exercise every day, even just a little bit for 20 or 30 minutes is making a huge difference. Number two is that I have been eliminating as many decisions as possible. Now, as entrepreneurs, as creatives, especially as writers, we have so many decisions that we have to make all the time. Even if you're not in business, just having to decide what your characters are going to say or do next or what type of hair color your character has or what your next series is going to be about. There are so many day to day decisions. And then, of course, when you're a YouTuber and a, uh, when you're a YouTuber and you're self publishing, it's just a mountain of decisions that have to be made. And sometimes that can add so much to the anxiety because there's fear if I make the wrong decisions or, um, you know, once your anxiety builds up, it gets very difficult to make decisions. So then when you're faced with having to do it anyway, when you don't feel like it and your nerves are on the edge, it can just feel impossible. And it can be that one little decision that pushes you over the edge into an anxiety spiral. So I've been eliminating as many decisions as possible, especially ones that tend to trigger negative feelings or thoughts. So for me, that has been things like meal planning. So every week on Sunday, I just sit down and decide all the meals all at once so that I don't end up like Monday, I've had a really long day, I've got a million things I've been deciding all day. And then my husband says to me, what's for dinner? And I have no idea. And then I start to feel overwhelmed by the choices because maybe I've been working a little bit too late. And now it's too late to go out to a restaurant or get food ordered. And then I have to figure out something to cook, but nothing sounds good. And it just feels like that can trigger or spiral my anxiety. So I just make all all of those decisions on Sunday at the beginning of the week, I use a classic happy planner that has three boxes to mark breakfast, lunch and dinner. And I just stick to that, then there's no more decisions to make if I'm running late, my husband looks in the planner and he says, Okay, I'm making sausage and broccoli tonight. And he gets it done. So making that that type of decision ahead of time has been extremely helpful. Also, as I've been dealing with not only postpartum anxiety, but my postpartum body where it just 
can't seem to get this weight off and it's been a little bit of a struggle for me, I have found, I started to find that I was having a lot of anxiety about how my clothes were fitting. So instead of worrying about making decisions every morning about what I was going to wear, I legitimately went on to Amazon, ordered seven pair of identical black leggings that fit. And so all I have to do every single morning is go in, I have my leggings up on the closet shelf, all rolled up seven across and I just grab the next pair of leggings, put on a t-shirt and it's done for the day. Maybe I'm not looking my most fashionable self, but at least I don't have to go through that negative spiral of, oh my gosh, let me try this on. No, that doesn't fit. That doesn't look good either. And I just don't have to worry about that. And I also don't have to make a decision about what I'm going to wear. I literally just grab a pair of leggings. These were like $14 a piece and I love them. They're super comfy. This isn't a permanent solution for me because of course I am hoping that I will lose the weight once I stop breastfeeding and things settle down a little bit more with my hormones. But the last thing I need right now is to be really worrying about my weight or what I'm going to wear or what feels comfortable. So it's been a huge anxiety reducer for me to just be able to walk into the closet, pick up the leggings, pick up a tank top and a t-shirt and be done for the day. So yeah, eliminating as many decisions, especially the ones that trigger stress as possible has been incredibly helpful. So a third thing for me is meditation. I have been doing a lot more meditation. I mentioned this before that my husband for our 10 year anniversary in December bought me a little meditation cabinet and a meditation pillow to sit on. And I have been downloading like some guided meditations from Gaia and from the Oprah Deepak Chopra, um, like meditation vault. And I have been sitting down for anywhere between eight and 20 minutes a day to do some meditation. And this is just a practice where I can sit there with my crystals and my vision board and my candles and my tarot cards and just be for a little bit. My brain doesn't have to be going into overdrive. I try to, even though those thoughts will come up about how much needs to get done or how much isn't getting done or what I need to do next, I am able to calm those thoughts and really just breathe and think happy thoughts or think nothing at all. And it helps tremendously. So even though I'm not a great meditator, I still have like a lot of those thoughts that keep coming up. I'm able to hear and recognize those thoughts and then just let them go. And I know that this is something I will get better at over time. But having this space that is just mine, that has all these things that I love in them, where I can just have some me time every night to meditate has been wonderful for my anxiety. Number four, gaming. So this is something that my husband really pressed for. If you've been following me for a while and you know my story, you know that Oh my gosh, 13 years ago, I think my husband and I met playing a game called EverQuest 2. And this was one of the first MMOs that I really, really loved. It's a massive multiplayer online game. And I started playing EverQuest originally, but George and I didn't meet playing that game, even though we both played it separately. But when EverQuest 2 came out, we were both playing it and that's how we met and fell in love. And that was a huge part of our relationship and our lives for years until we had a son. And of course, you know, between a business and having a child, it was much more difficult to find hours and hours to play games. But I have continued to be a gamer throughout the years. I just haven't had as much time to dedicate to it. Well, ever since I had Evie, because I've got that huge responsibility and I want to be spending as much time with her as possible when she's awake, I have had to often push my business tasks or my um, videos or my writing into the evening times. And what was starting to happen for me was that was causing my anxiety to flare up because there wasn't a single minute throughout the day when I didn't have something that was getting done. So I had family responsibilities or I was cleaning or I was doing a bunch of stuff and work in pockets of time throughout the day. And then in the evenings, instead of being able to relax when she went to sleep, I was still working and this was not not working out for me. So I had to kind of push my writing goal off a little bit to the side. I had to eliminate some of the videos I had planned to do and a few of the projects I had planned to do for this quarter and instead make some time for fun things like gaming. And even though it sounds like frivolous to say, oh, I've prioritized gaming time, I cannot tell you how much this has helped my anxiety. So I have told myself 
myself, like as of 7 p.m. every night, I am going to stop responding to Facebook comments, YouTube comments, and all the other work that I tend to do either on social media or videos or working on planners or whatever else I'm doing. And whether I've gotten everything done for the day that I intended to or not, it's just a hard stop for me. And then we have our family like things that we do together until she goes to bed. And then once our kids are in bed, we have been prioritizing having at least an hour or two hours a night to go back and play EverQuest 2. Now, this has been super fun. We're spending time together. We're laughing a lot more. And sometimes we're also watching a TV show while we're gaming on like an extra monitor. And that's been fun too, to kind of get to watch some TV shows that I hadn't watched before. And um, just setting aside some personal time to game and do something that I really love (sighs) has been a huge anxiety reducer for me. And at first I was afraid it was going to increase my anxiety because I wasn't working or getting things done that felt productive. But once I gave myself permission to just enjoy it and to stop worrying about what wasn't getting done, oh my gosh, it was just like a huge weight off my shoulders. And now that is some of the time I look forward to most is that time at night with my husband when we're gaming again. So number five is really leaning in to my closest friendships. So when I'm super busy, and I'm feeling a lot of anxiety, sometimes I will back away from a lot of my friendships because I don't want our conversations to be like for me to be a burden on anyone or for me to be complaining all the time because that only sends me into worse of a negative spiral. So a lot of times I just sort of close up and don't reach out to friends. So instead, during this period of anxiety, what I decided to do was to really reach out and lean into those friendships. So one is my cousin Kimberly, who I love so much. She's so amazing. She's been spending a lot of time with me on Marco Polo, which is an app where you can leave video chats to each other. And so we talk every single day on that. And another is one of my really, really good friends from college named Kelly. And she also has been leaving me messages and we've been chatting back and forth on Marco Polo and in text messages. And just having those friendships that I can lean on and really talk about my issues, but also even when we're just talking about our lives and sharing funny stories about our past and our history, it's just a lot more laughter and fun and leaning into those friendships has greatly reduced my anxiety because I feel like I'm not alone in this world. And I feel like I've got someone that I can laugh with and share stories with and just be myself with. So big shout out to my friend Kelly and my cousin Kim. And of course, to my sister, Chris, who is always there for me. And yes, I know those are all K names because Chris is also spelled with a K. Um, So yeah, I'm feeling the K friendships and family this, this time of year, but just so grateful to my friendships that I can lean on. Um, during this time. Number six is something that I've been working through in therapy. So I've mentioned this before as well, but I'm currently in EMDR therapy. If you don't know what that is, you can go Google it. But it's really dealing with a lot of past trauma, which of course is bringing up some of the anxiety, but overall is helping me work through it in a way that's healthy that will last for years to come. So I'm working through with the EMDR and what we've talked about a lot in therapy is this process of reframing where whenever these negative or anxiety thought spirals start to happen, where I start to feel hopeless or I start to feel like I'm not doing enough or I'm not making enough impact or I'm not getting a book out fast enough. When I start to go down this path of having all these anxious thoughts, What I do now and what she's teaching me to do in therapy is to recognize when I have that thought, understand it and say, okay, I hear you. I see that I'm falling into this negative thought spiral about my books or my productivity. So instead of allowing it to continue, I recognize it and I take a deep breath And then I think, how can I reframe this? So an example thought that can start an anxiety spiral is everyone is disappointed in me because I haven't published a book in over a year. That can start me down a huge anxiety spiral. So what I'll do now, instead of just letting it take me down to the bottom depths of despair is I will hear that thought and I will recognize it. And I'll say, okay, I recognize that as one of my anxiety thoughts take several deep breaths, hold it, let it out, another deep breath, and kind of feel that breath and think that thought. And then I will come up with something else to replace that thought or reframe that thought. So instead of thinking I'm just everyone's disappointed in me, I would say, I have such amazing loyal fans. And I am so grateful for the fans that are waiting patiently and with excitement for my next book. 
that gets me into a better thought process or something like I have as much time as I need to write the next book. I'm in no rush. Everything is going to be okay. But I take those types of negative thought spirals and I turn them around. And this is something that takes a lot of practice and a lot of time and dedication because I have to actually listen and pay attention to my own thoughts. And then I have to not allow myself to get like mired down in it. But it is actually helping a lot when I am really conscientious about catching that thought and turning it around. It really helps me manage my anxiety and not let it get out of hand. The seventh thing, and this is the final tip, is I've really been leaning hard on my plan. So as you guys know, if you've been following this channel, you know that I have a system of planning for 90 days where I set up this Kanban board like it is behind me. I set three goals for the quarter, and then I separate those goals down into projects that I'm going to work on for the next 90 days. And then I take those projects and I break them down into bite-sized time any little tasks. And each task that I'm going to complete throughout the quarter goes on to a sticky note up here. This type of plan where I'm able to really decide exactly what I'm going to work on for the quarter and it's all written down on these little sticky notes that I can finish in an afternoon or an hour makes me feel like I'm so much more in control. Also, I can come into my office and I can see all those sticky notes lined up on the bottom and those are all the ones that I've done and is completed. And I feel like, okay, I actually have have been making a difference. I actually have been doing something and that helps me with my anxiety. Also, when I'm having a lot of anxiety and I feel like I'm getting nothing done, it helps me to come in here and distract myself by looking on the board and saying, okay, what could I get done even with how I'm feeling right now? Sometimes it's those writing tasks that don't get done, but there's other things like I can make a video or I can write a blog post or I can set up some images or like take some pictures of my planners that I'm going to post on social media later. So I'll I'll pick up one of those sticky notes and I'll just dive right into it as a way of distracting myself from the anxiety. And this will full stop the anxiety spiral that I've been on and will get me into productivity mode, which then begins to build positive momentum in my life. So leaning hard on that plan right now is really what's saving me because I think otherwise I would just not be getting anything done and then getting nothing done only stacks into a negative spiral again. And I know I keep saying this about spirals, but it's so true for me that once I have momentum in a negative way, it just continues to get more negative. But if I can switch it around and start moving things in a more positive direction, even just like baby step by baby step into a more positive momentum, it tends to build on itself and then things get better and better and better. So with my plan where I've got all these sticky notes, all I have to do is come in and say, okay, which one am I going to do right now? And instead of allowing myself to to spiral into that negative momentum space, I can choose and identify something I can do that's really easy that I can get done very quickly, and I can just get it done. And then once that's done, and I've moved it down on my board, I start to feel proud of myself, I start to feel like I'm getting things accomplished, and I have control. And that feeling builds a positive momentum in my life. I can either choose another sticky note and get another thing done and another thing done, or I can go meditate or I can go for that walk. But either way, I've now put myself on a more positive momentum path. And that is pretty much saving my life right now. So that is all I have for you guys for these seven ways that I am coping with anxiety. Let me know if any of these help you or if you've been struggling with anxiety or depression in your writing time as well. I do have some more tips for you coming up of how to get back into a writing habit, especially if you've been dealing with a period of burnout or frustration with your writing or writer's block. So those videos are coming up as we talk about getting prepared for Camp NaNoWriMo in April, which I'm super excited about. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure that you do subscribe and ring the bell so that you'll get notified whenever a new video comes up for me, because I do have some great videos on how to get back into the writing habit coming up soon. Also, just to remind you guys, my HB90 program, where I will teach you how to set up your Kanban board, set your goals and break those down into projects and tasks. And really this course is about more than just productivity. It's also all about how to set a vision for your life and really think big and how to get it done and achieve big things in your life. 
um, in a way that's sustainable that will bring joy into your life so if you're interested in that we kick off this Sunday this used to be a three-day course and now I have expanded it with all new videos as a seven-day course so it's bigger and better than ever and you'll have even more support from me so we start on Sunday so if you'd love to come join I will have a link for you down in the description box below where you can come join the HB90 bootcamp all right that's all I have I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you guys in my next video bye